Hello. We're here. I think we're here. Welcome. We're here. Welcome, everyone, to episode 61 of the 72 Pin Connector podcast. With us this evening, we are missing one Irk. So if you have found him, I have put up Lost and Found posters all over Seattle. Uh, there is a $20 Steam gift card reward code if you can find him and return him safely home. Oh, well, that uh, would be but, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, Until driving, then. I've been driving around my neighborhood the past few hours. No signs. Yeah, I'm just I, I yell uh, big mouth bass fishing. Yeah, um, I, I yell, <laughs> I yell uh, spaghetti bake and he just doesn't come home. So uh, yeah. if you can find him, $20 to oh, see oh, for you. I left a trail of beef jerky out to my front door. So <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Either he'll that. knock on the door or I will be eaten by wolves shortly. Yeah. So, but hey, we've got like it the on camera, and that's all that yeah. that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> so with us this evening, we have myself. I am Tom. We have Adam. Hello. And we have Josh. Hey. And we are going to talk about video games uh, a little bit of the time and food most of the other time. So uh, <laughs> what I've got this evening uh, is I've got uh, <laughs> Holy crap. Ice- Yeah, look at this. Look at this. It's a giant uh, beer stein of uh, beautiful, delicious. Mm. Iced basic bitch peppermint mocha. Of course, uh, it is. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something new. I was no, excited. no, no. It it's is. just in a different glass. Yeah, it's just the same, same, same old thing. Same thing. Yeah, I, I, got... I thought about including the uh, the cocktail that I was drinking the past two nights, but I figured coffee was probably a little more my speed tonight. Oh, that's fair. I have yeah. a cold brew right now, so oh, I'm nice. in the same uh, same boat as Tom. <laughs> Does anybody Similar. ever do cold brew, but then like heats it up like regular coffee? I have not. Do people do that? Is that a thing? I don't, I don't know. know. It would make sense because it wouldn't have like the kick or the acidity, but it would yeah. still be delicious hot coffee. Yeah. I, uh, oh, that's I have a good one. It looks like coffee, but it is not. It's just a nice coffee mug filled with water. A nice 72 oh. PC mug. <laughs> Did you know by drinking water, you are actively <laughs> destroying a fish's habitat? That's why I only drink canned soda. Nice. <laughs> fish don't live in cans they only live in water which you are now destroying nice. True. Nice. okay so um i'm just gonna jump they only live in oh, water which you good. are now good. destroying good. yeah you're all right nice. True. yeah did you get your christmas stuff done uh yeah yeah i i gotta say like i haven't been out christmas shopping in oh damn three years uh because oh. i just buy it all online I don't nice. leave the house. I don't do Black Friday. I don't do any Very of that cool. shit. I sit right here and I go, oh, yeah, they'll like that. Oh, wait a minute. It's a plastic Triceratops that holds two tacos. <laughs> I will buy that instantly. I saw that picture. That was excellent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, I decided to buy my wife a Christmas gift. Usually, like, we're not very surprisey, gifty people. So she's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you want? Hockey tickets? I said, eh, give me 50 bucks. There's a Steam sale. I'll buy something. And she's like, all right. I said, what do you want? She said, I don't know. Part of a massage? So I got her part of a massage, but then I decided to surprise her by getting her the, what is it, the Triceratoco, the Taco Ceratops. <laughs> oh, the box isn't out here. It's something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, she, she was um, not as impressed with it as I was. It's a dinosaur <laughs> that holds tacos. I mean, how amazing is that? There's That's nothing really better in the it's, world. It's good. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just good. I'm I'm it's just it's just good. No, I'm hungry. <laughs> I, See, I'm the kind of person. taco ceratops is for. I like to wait until the day before Christmas Eve and then just like really panic and then go out and buy everybody gifts. That's a good way to do it. So you so yeah, tomorrow solid, or solid today? Plan. <laughs> today yeah, or tomorrow? I got, bunch, I got a bunch of stuff today. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> but I have a small family, so it's not a big deal. And they're all easy to buy for because nobody wants anything. Oh, so you just get them taco ceratopses. Yeah. There you okay. go. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You just, you know, pick pick stuff that everybody likes. Get yeah, you should just make a big uh closet full of random gifts that you can uh yeah. give every year. Oh, go full grandma style. My grandmother literally has an <laughs> entire closet in her house dedicated nice. to next year's Christmas. Right oh, now, okay. it is filled with stuff that will be given out, uh, you know, Christmas next year. That's crazy. Interesting. Yeah, she will. She will buy Christmas gifts all throughout the year and decorations. Like it hits like January when all the Christmas decoration prices plummet, and she will just stock up for next year. We do <laughs> that for. Like, 
I, I'm even. I'm guessing probably even Christmas cookies. She will mm. buy later and <laughs> keep them for the entire year to That's give wonderful. them out. Wow, in nice crunch, nice crunchy cookies. We do the oh, same yeah. thing you, for I Halloween. Meant, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's smart to buy that stuff after the seasons. I thought when you were talking about your grandma with the closet thing, I thought you meant that she like always has gifts in there. I'm like, when is she going to give you that nice? Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. It's just buried in there somewhere. <laughs> she was it? she actually did that one year. She had I forget what it was. It was like some like SNES era thing during the N64 era. And nice. she handed me this t-shirt and I was like, holy shit, this is the best thing ever. Like I wasn't I didn't know that it was like retro at the time. I just knew, hey, there's Super Mario World on a t-shirt and I have to have it. <laughs> as I went home to play Mario 64. <laughs> Reminds me of an Onion article. There was an Onion article that says, uh, like, 36-year-olds, overprotective parents finally give in and buy him a PlayStation 1 for Christmas. Oh, nice. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> okay, so real, real talk. Uh, my grandmother, I was helping her clean out her uh, freezer, her big-ass stand-up freezer in the garage. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the one where she kept all the popsicles. So, you know, we were always oh. in it. Uh, yeah. But I dug out a TV dinner... From the 1960s. I swear to God, it had like <laughs> copyright 1968 on it. I was like, holy shit. It was encased in a block of ice. Uh, it was That's wonderful. It was insane. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Uh, we did not. We did not. I said, Mamma, <laughs> we should have this for dinner. And she, she hit me and she said, go away. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. Just usual conversations with grandma. Uh, my grandmother's nuts. <laughs> She's absolutely insane. I love her to death. Nice. Like uh, until like a couple years ago, um, I would get her a big ass v- a bottle of expensive vodka, and uh, without <laughs> fail, every February it would be gone. Oh wow! Nice. Like she's she's Very a nice. hardcore woman. Oh, was that the grandma I met at your guys' wedding? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she she's was cool. she was funny. She's as well. ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah, video games, video games, video games. Is it so, time to talk video, video games? Game. Can we do that right now? Yeah, I think, I think we can. I think all we're right. all in the clear here. All right. So first, uh, let's talk PUBG. Uh, so yeah. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds hit 1.0. Uh, they finally had the big release. They hit the big button. Um, it is totally out of early access. It is, uh, as the devs say, a full game now. Um, yes. You know whether right. or not it is or isn't is might be up for debate. Uh, but yeah. let's talk about it because we played a yeah. bunch yesterday yeah. and. I played a lot yesterday and today. Yeah. Um, it's it's a vast improvement over the last version. It's even an improvement over the test version I played the last week or so. Oh, really? Yeah. But um, the game just runs so much better. It's smooth. Um, it's not perfect. It's, you know, it's still not perfect. There are still some server issues, some network stuff. Uh, there's some rubber banding. Uh, hit detection. You know, sometimes it seems yeah. kind of weird. But I'm also bad, so... That could be me too. Maybe I just don't have a bullet <laughs> drop. But uh, yeah, the servers are still, you know, servers are still iffy. But the game itself runs way better. Uh, the vaulting is great. Uh, oh, the vaulting! A lot of it's quality of so life. Good. Stuff. Just it's it's a lot of fun to play. I've been playing a lot. I've played it more. I played more PUBG than Rocket League this week, which is odd. But that's <laughs> that's yeah, that's, that's kind of release. a kind of a testament. Um, Vaulting has completely changed the way I play PUBG. Mm-hmm. Completely. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of that is I am no longer terrified of fences or chest high walls. Yes. <laughs> um, also, it's just, it's so much fun to be able to jump through a window with glass intact and just have it shatter and just tell everyone in Pochinki or wherever you are, hey, I'm hey, jumping through me. a window right now, just letting you know. <laughs> All right. Just in case you didn't know I was here. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and circle around me with your whole squad. It is so no, I great. A, I, I, can, have ha- I have a bad habit of jumping through all the windows uh, and then not opening up any of the doors, and then I can't remember <laughs> which buildings I've looted already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can yeah. see how that would be an issue. I need. I really want to play some of it. I got a chance to play a game, uh, a game or two with you guys um, once yesterday, yeah. and then once uh, once today. But it seems to me like everyone wants to play it. So yeah, it's hard to it's hard to maintain a group. <laughs> we can always split the groups up, even if it's a bunch of people playing twos or something. Next time, yeah. that's is everybody, exactly everybody what we're gonna included. do. Yeah, yeah. 
It's the close quarters combat feels so much better right now. So much better. Actually, I killed a guy. I shot him in the dick like three times. It was great. It was everything Battlegrounds was meant to be. Yeah. Um, vaulting is fantastic. The new map. Um, yes. Way really super wide open. Um, yeah. It's it is definitely made for snipers and long distance weapons, which, you know, are still it's still Battlegrounds, right? They're not like super rare, but they're pretty rare. Mm-hmm. Um, the Winchester, a uh, great rifle. I haven't actually killed anyone with it. Uh, yeah, but in watching fun, a bunch though. of streams, uh, it's super powerful and built for distance. You can't attach anything to it, uh, but it is, it's a great gun. Um, and if you're not out in the fields, out in the wide open, uh, chances are you're in the heart of a big city. Uh, there's lots of verticality to it. There's lots of little hidey holes. Um, you never feel like... Uh, there, there are a couple places in the original map where you felt like, okay, I'm facing a direction. Anyone who comes by, I'm going to see them. When you're in the middle of one of these cities on the new map, you, they could be anywhere, literally anywhere, coming from any direction. There is no safe space to, to be found in this city of this scale, uh, yes. which is a, it's a terrible and a great feeling all at once. Uh, it really fits the game, and I, I really hope they do more with cityscapes and future maps. I would actually, and I know this is this is kind of weird, but I would like to see a map that is at least 50% cities. I actually wouldn't mind a kind of small map that was just a city. The, I think that that's what, yes. that would be that's, that's something that I really really want to see. I, mm-hmm. I'm like that's the one thing about PUBG is it's not super fast paced because it's so big, but that's yeah. a part of the charm. Yeah. It would be really right. nice to see like a really really tight quarters like maybe more verticality and yeah. just like a just a city that'd Which, be super fun yeah there is a little bit more v- verticality in this map for sure oh yeah absolutely uh, some of the cities in that giant map have some tall buildings in them definitely but um i just i tend to like those encounters more the the city encounters more than you know oh crap there's a guy half a mile on that hill way over there. And we've both got sniper rifles with super far bullet drop because of the distance and trying to lead forever and time everything properly. And I just have a lot more fun when everything's a little closer together. Yeah, I agree. Um, and no clip, uh, if you haven't checked out no clip, check them out. They're on YouTube. All their stuff's free. Uh, they do great video game documentaries. They did, um, I want to say a 30 minute interview with player unknown talking about, battlegrounds talking about the upcoming xbox launch at the time Mm -hmm. before it was out um and they asked him uh you know what what do you want to see more of where do you think this could go and he said you know uh, it's uh, the the battlegrounds formula the you know you're one person or a squad of you know two to four people out versus a hundred other people the battle royale game type um it's it's good but it's just a framework you can add so much more to this and he was talking about um like let's say you have a Nakatomi Tower or a, a skyscraper, right? And instead of, you know, a circle on a, a flat horizontal field getting closer and closer together, if you just start isolating floors out, like with, with fire or, or even like a circle that would be spherical that would come in and center around one area of a giant skyscraper building to have a really vertically oriented battleground system, mm-hmm. um, he said that would be really cool and it's something that they would consider. Um, so I'm really looking forward to Nakatomi Tower Battlegrounds. I think that would be <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, uh, that would be amazing. I, cannot, I it's short short combat uh, or short range combat is really the only thing Battlegrounds is truly missing. Um, mm-hmm. Fortnite gets away with it because the map is so small and people are congested together at the start of the game by default, no matter where you jump. Um, Battlegrounds doesn't really have that. It has it in a couple places, like. Uh, the military base, obviously, the prison and the new map. Um, it also but- has it when you encounter a bug in which we're all playing together, deciding where to drop, and then the plane <laughs> oh. just drops all 100 players at once forcefully. Which oh, uh, my God. You, happened you, to you, us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So we do we do have a clip. Um, you should you should I'll absolutely it, check I'll that out. I'll post it in the chat. Yeah. So so get in, in Twitch chat if you're not there already. Um, 
it was ridiculous. We're all on a plane. We're like, okay, where are we jumping? Oh, hey, let's just let's just straight shot jump here. Let's just jump here, man. Let's just do it. YOLO run. Let's all jump. And we were joking about it. And then everyone drops. And by everyone, I mean not our squad. I mean literally the <laughs> entire plane evacuates. There were so people. many people everywhere. Yeah, crazy. 100 people right in the middle of town. Like just right in the middle of wherever they dropped. It was the most ridiculous and the most fun bug I have encountered in years. Uh, and I really wish that that were a game mode. I wish rapid drop was an, a, a tick box option. And if more than 50% of players voted for rapid drop, it would just randomly decide this is where you're getting off. That it was, was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I actually kind of wish that was more common. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's not it's not intended at all, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was it was a good time. Um but not to be outdone, uh we also played some Fortnite Battle Royale, which was cool. Um with the release of Battlegrounds 1.0, um and going back to Fortnite, I, I don't wanna concentrate on this too heavily because we have beat this into the ground a lot. Um there are a lot of quality of life things that PUBG has done that Fortnite has not emulated yet. And I really love to see both of these games competing. They are different. They are uh, completely different feeling games in their own right. Um, uh, you know, uh, I have liked Fortnite better. Uh, I think PUBG is kind of swinging me their way, though, with this newest release that makes the game just smoother and make, makes it feel better, frankly. Um, but uh, I, I like the way they're competing. I, I like what we're seeing here. Yeah, I'm really liking it. I mean, I play. I still prefer Fortnite right now, mainly because I like the faster play. But I think I just <laughs> haven't played enough PUBG. Um, but I mean, the same thing happened to me again on the last games that I've played. That happened to me every time, which is you spend a whole bunch of time getting yeah. ready, and then you get into one fight, yeah. die, and it's all over. Or I mean, we got into two. I think we, to be fair, I, I I ran a guy over, but that doesn't really count as a fight. And <laughs> yeah. then I also yeah, ran. That's satisfying. And I also ran from a guy, which is is good. But again, like that's a part of the charm. That's why it works so well. That's why it's so tense. I, that's why it's so. In, that's why it's yeah. so. But um, you know, like I I don't know. I just got to do some more, more like yellow runs where you go in and you just try to shoot people and survive. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 that's why I really want them to make a small map. It'd mm -hmm. be so cool. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, at the same, on the same re respect, you know, I dropped into a town in PUBG, which I really, really liked, and uh, I ended up getting a whole bunch of attachments and body armor and a helmet, and I got all that stuff really quick, and I got a pistol. And then, <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of rough <laughs> to like, you know, you get totally geared up and then all, you're running around with a pistol for half the game. So, and then you right. finally get a gun and then you die. You're like, ah, oh, damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoy yeah, it. I, I encounter that a little less than I thought I did when going back to PUBG. So I was like, oh, this never happens in Fortnite. I always have something. And I played like three games today where I had literally nothing. Like I had a bunch of bullets that I could throw at people, but nothing to actually fire them with. <laughs> uh, and then, then when playing PUBG last night, it didn't happen as often as I thought I, it, it would. Uh, or yeah. it didn't happen as often as I thought it did. Yeah, it's a, it's it's. I feel like they've been doing a really good job with with loot balancing, and I think that's really the coolest part about it. I I feel like um after you know I did I did run into the situation where I was running around with nothing for a while, but again that might just be me too. You know, like mm -hmm. I think knowing the areas to loot and knowing what's available where and knowing how to loot fast, it's like a whole that's a whole part of it, right? It's a whole part yeah. of the meta is getting in there, getting out. But uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Fortnite, PUBG, um, it's, it's games been good. totally different. Yeah, they're really yeah. good though. They're both really good now. They're both like super strong games. Both of yeah. them. There's not really like there's a place for both of them, obviously, and they're great. Yeah, uh, Josh, I know uh, you had noticed something um, about Fortnite, the single player versus Battle Royale. Before we jump off of this and and to keep it as a smooth segue, you want to <laughs> tell us what news you had there? Yeah, so a lot of what's happening. Um, so Fortnite's battle royale is is a is a separate thing um, from this what 
was the main game, which I say was because it doesn't seem like it was treated that it's been being treated that way. Basically, Fortnite was more of a um, like a castle tower defense. You know, you build your you build your base, and then uh, you know zombies come at you, and you try to survive. Uh, there's a few quests here and there, but for the most part, it's like you're you build and then you survive the the storm, right? Um, yeah. And people pre-ordered that and actually had to pay money. You have to pay money to play that part of the game. The Battle Royale is free. Um, but what's happening now is since Battle Royale has taken off and you're comparing, like, you know, now, now we're getting constant comparisons between one of the biggest games of our time right now, which is probably PUBG, right? And then and Fortnite, which just came out of nowhere. Um, yeah. The, you know, the save the world portion, as they call it, is getting uh, kind of screwed in a way. Because what's happening is a lot of the users are starting to report um, drops in server quality. Uh, because now they're allocating, it seems like, I mean, I don't have, uh, you know, evidence on this, but what they, it seems like they're allocating more resources towards the Battle Royale portion and not towards the paid portion of the game. So it's starting, and, and you get constant reports of this um, on the forums and on Reddit and every, and it, they're not responding to actively to this, which is mm. sort of frustrating. So, because if you paid for the original game, you probably paid full video game price, um, you know, sixty dollars. And then in order to get anywhere in that, since it's a you know it's a loot crate system for the most part, and in order to get better stuff. You have to open these llamas, right? That's what they that's what they use instead of crates. Um, and you put you can put real money into that. And a lot of people did, and a lot of people expanded that even further into like this ultimate edition, which is another hundred dollars on top of their sixty dollars. So some people are nearly two hundred dollars deep into the game, and they're starting to experience like you know these server drop offs. And on top of that, people that are doing that are also that are playing the main game are also having being forced to wait in line because they're shared servers so if you try to get connected uh into those servers you you know you you may have paid for a game that you don't get to play today or at least for another four hours i was really curious about what you guys felt about those two things it's just uh yeah yeah it's rough uh i mean from their perspective the battle royale is doing way better than the the save the world version of the game but those people did spend a good chunk of money to play that because that's still early access. Right. So yeah, it's, and that's a it, weird part really too, really is that, is, is it, it's it early access for a game that's going to be free to play. Uh, -huh. uh, and now they're deprioritizing it for the free to play game. That's free to play to free to play. And that one is <laughs> in that. And battle Royale has left early access. Battle, battle Royale is full release, by the way. I don't know yeah. if you know that. Yeah. Okay. I, I actually didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, so they say Battle Royale, uh, the Battle Royale portion went out of early access before, uh, before they even um, before uh, PUBG. It was out before PUBG. Mm. That's how they got it on like the Playstations and all those. So interesting. It's really, it's really kind of concerning because a lot of these people said, "Oh, Fortnite's a great game, and I really want to support it. It's a little niche, and it's a little something I really like." Um, and the the main the core game is actually really good. So if anybody actually wants to give that a shot, you should. It's a really good time. Um, it's really just more. It's a PVE. You know, you're not fighting anybody. You're just kind of, you know, just grinding out missions, wandering around, doing stuff. But it's it's quite uh, frustrating. You know, um, especially yeah. the waiting yeah. in line portion. That's that seems a bit much. I think was it EA that got. Uh, they got a whole bunch of backlash for making their people wait in line for for something. Or was it like the Call of Duty games or something like that? I don't remember exactly. But I remember someone getting a lot of backlash because they had to wait in line for a game they paid for. Yeah, well, games do that. A lot of games have queuing systems. And the first time I encountered it was in World of Warcraft. Uh, back at the peak of, of popularity, or I guess not the peak, but one of the earlier peaks of popularity, you know, clicking to log in, it says, you are 400th in line. Please wait. Your estimated wait time is X to get into the server for the game you are paying right. a monthly service fee for after yeah. buying the damn discs. <laughs> um, right. It, I mean, 
it sucks, yes, but at the same time, uh, when you're in shared environments on shared resources with shared servers, it's it's a fact of life in online gaming. Um, That's true. I, I know. I know we like to to bitch about companies on this show and and bitch about them doing the wrong things or not scaling enough, but the yeah, fact of the matter is. You know, when 6 p.m. rolls around or, or when 8 p.m. rolls around uh, Eastern Standard Time, you know, the Eastern Seaboard of the United States is logging on to World of Warcraft and there are going to be waits, right? There's there's a large influx of players and stuff doesn't scale instantly uh, in most cases, right? Unless you build really, really tight infrastructure, you can't just snap your fingers and have 10,000 more slots opened up on your servers. Uh, some companies can, and that's great. Uh, but some companies just can't or haven't put forth the money to do that. Right. And that makes sense. But then you get into this weird situation, right? So this is a shared, obviously shared resources, and we and we get that. But the weirdest part about it is half the people have paid somewhere between 60 to $200 to play the game, and the rest of them yeah. haven't paid a penny. Yeah. And then now you're at the situation where if you go onto those subreddits and you go onto those forums, all of those people that paid upward of $200 and paid for this founder package and all that are asking, hey, can we just have priority? And now you're at a weird situation where you're saying, <laughs> yeah. you're saying, you're saying, pay to play, right? Like who, who pays more, right? And then who, who gets uh, mm-hmm. priority? You can't really do that like ethically. A bad hole. Yeah. But at the same time, you think to yourself, you know what? Like those guys paid two hundred dollars for this game. Like maybe they should have priority over the people that didn't pay in a, a single dollar. But then you know, it, it, it's it's gray in a way. You think about it. It's <laughs> I, like, yeah. it's hard to I say because, know. especially because like you know, one one thing that was posted that was interesting is like anyone that paid for you know founders rewards between this time period gets priority you know that way it doesn't encourage you to buy the founders packs ahead of time it's it's so bad it's so bad to think about yeah. but like at the same time you're like <sighs> it's 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 shared resources you have a I you don't... have a split you have a real split between free and paid it, it seems like this is kind of an artifact of uh epic jumping onto a bandwagon um and getting to be very successful because they're the only ones you know directly competing with PUBG at a um, you know, at, at scale, because there are right. games like you know Daisy, and and there are other Daisy battle royale games. Fast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but at at the same time, these these people are complaining about paying for an early access game that's going to be free to play. Did you not think you were already getting fucked over enough? I mean, did did you not think the fucking over would stop? Then I don't want to be a prick about this, but you literally mm. bought something that's going to be free. Right. You are you are paying a developer to beta test their shitty, unfinished, broken ass game, right? And Fortnite is not shitty. It's not broken ass, but you are literally paying for an unfinished product. Did you expect them to treat you like something more than a, a sap that's that's easily parted with their wallet? Um, right. I mean, I I can I, see that, but at the same time, you know, it it's like. They used a lot of those. I mean, Grand Epic's a AAA company, so it's not like they didn't have the money to do it to begin with. They're not like you know, they're not hurting for money, right? But it's uh, it's really interesting. It's a really interesting thing to bring up, where you know, you have people that have been supporting them from the from the onset before they had a battle royale, and they've been playing their servers, grinding their stuff, to like, oh, we'll put out new content. Because also. Um, there's there's a, a soft cap for this game for the uh, PVE portion. Like once you hit level sixty, all of the um, like cinematic portions of the missions go away, and they start becoming extremely generic. You're in the same map, and they've been saying like, okay, we'll put out, we're gonna put out the next um, iteration, the next uh, the next town, the next area, everything. And they're like, okay, we'll put out that. But then now all of those people are starting to see. Battle Royale get constant huge updates, like new updates, a hu- another huge update, another huge update, uh, a new, you know, new this, new that. Um, and the guys that are, you know, playing the PvE portion don't get much of anything for the most part. A couple UI yeah. overhauls, like, other than that, nothing crazy. So it's really, it's a really interesting thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see where they, where they go from here. There's, there's not much that we could tell 
you know, because they, they did, you know, just start getting these complaints and Battle Royale just, you know, it's, it's hitting its high point now. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see. And, and we've got competition now because PUBG actually runs. It runs on computers runs. that are not from space, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is great. Um, that is nice. I'm going to... I'm going to just travel travel down my gaming list here. So I hit up some Overwatch, uh, Mario Odyssey, 20XX. Pick it up. It's, it's fun, and it should be on sale right now. Um, I should have looked up that price. Um, I will do that later. Uh, Destiny, it's, it's feeling grindy. I'm still in the early throes of it, and I am really glad I didn't pay for it. Uh, because <laughs> with a bunch of the stuff Bungie has been doing with their, their Christmas event recently, people are bitching about, uh, like as of today or yesterday, um, they also had, uh, like, uh, one of their systems had a bug in it, which looked like they were trying to money grab. Like it's, it's a bunch of shitty little things that can be fixed. They do look like innocent bugs, but with what they try to do with locking out content in the expansions, I don't think they can be trusted with a living game. I don't think Bungie can be trusted building an MMO. And even if these are innocent mistakes, which most likely they are, right? Let's, let's not beat them to death. But these are mm -hmm. just innocent bugs, innocent mistakes. It does paint them in a really bad light. Uh, and I'm really glad someone gifted me this game. I'm really glad I didn't pay money for it. And there's no way I'm going to buy any of the, of the expansions. Um... So, other than that, uh, a friend of mine gave me uh, a new a new gift. And for those of you on audio, I'm holding up a Steam Link box. Uh, so this is a box. You hook it to your TV. Uh, it connects over your your home's local connection to your uh, your gaming PC running Steam. It's a cool little box. Uh, I got my my. It is in the interest of uh, you know shoveling off as much hardware as I can onto the show, uh, my 8-BitDo SF30 Pro to wirelessly hook to my Steam Link, uh, and it works really well. So it was like a buck or something if you buy the controller with it. So uh, yeah, that's fun if you need one. Um, I played some Rocket League. You guys, I actually loaded up Rocket oh, League yeah. on my own. We finally got you <laughs> going on... Wait, wait, don't, don't be so fast. I loaded it up on my own, and I didn't play soccer. <laughs> I, I played uh, Snow Day. Yeah, I played Rocket Hockey. Hey, baby steps. That's good. <laughs> We're getting uh, you hooked so, onto the game, and then we'll get, hooked, get you hooked onto the regular mode. It's, it's so much fun, and I have a nice wireless controller and the Steam Link to use it with, and that's really the only reason I loaded up Rocket League, but I had a good time. I actually enjoyed myself. I am not awful at the hockey. I just realized I'm awful compared to everyone else. Um, so yeah, Rocket League. It's fun. And, and I played it's with the guys fun. today. And I, I did score. I scored like three times. It was great. Very nice. Um, Adam gave me a gift. Finding Paradise, the sequel to To the Moon. Um, which is... I can't call it fun. Um, it's, it's, enjoy it's funny in places. It's kind of sad in places. It looks like... Uh, Without you know getting into spoilers, it looks like the story of To the Moon, except the spouse is alive and actively hates you for changing her husband's memories. Uh, that's not really a story. That's the premise of the whole game. So I'll be interested to see where this uh, this ends up. Um, I put six more hours into The Witcher Three. The quests, the writing, everything about that game is just fantastic. If you haven't picked it up, it is on sale right now. The game of the uh, game of the year edition. Only buy the Game of the Year edition. The regular edition is for sale on Steam, but it is $20, uh, so go pick that up. Um, I also played CSGO for our postcast game last time, which was just marred by cheaters just everywhere. It was, it's honestly the most cheaters I've seen in Counter-Strike in years. Uh, really? Yeah, it, was, it actually ruined the game. We, <laughs> we just decided to quit after the like, third or fourth guy aim hacking. Um, or wall hacking. It was, it was bad. Um, I also picked up another game, Onward, uh, which is trying to be like the Rainbow Six of the VR world. It's, oh, really? Yeah, it's odd. Um, because hmm. you, you won't see a guy, and then you'll hear some shots, and you'll be dead. Um, you know, as is Rainbow Six. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. Uh, there are some definite technical issues with this game but if you're looking for a 
Counter Strike ish, see, uh, yeah, Counter Strike ish, Rainbow Six ish style game, but in VR. Onward is the one for you. Uh, it is. I would not call this a full release at all. It is mm-hmm. definitely in. Uh, it's a little further than tech demo, uh, as far as quality Which is goes. Pretty good for a VR game at this point. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, it's definitely the most polished out of the third party VR games that I've seen. Um, it's good. It's fun. I would. I would pick it up. Um, I will say the biggest uh, death knell for VR multiplayer games is the community just dying out. I had yeah. trouble getting into a server because they were all full. Oh, um, really? Like, yeah, there were That's probably a... 100 to 150 people on, all in full server. Um, okay. It does have one of the coolest ways of spectating I've seen. So you die, you go back to this tent, uh, and you can watch a TV of a live stream of your teammates and talk to everyone else who's dead as well, which is really cool. Or oh, okay. there are, there yeah. are VR goggles on a table. You can pick them up and put it on your face and Whoa. actually get like into the map as a ghost to run around and, and watch people kill each other. So while wearing your VR goggles in the game, you have to pick up your VR goggles. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's VR real? exception. It is, uh, it is awesome. Nice. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's my, that's my whole week. Uh, well, before you get off, before you get off of what you were, uh, you were doing, I want to ask you something, um, cause I, I, I was trying to deal with cookie butts real quick, but now I've <laughs> dealt with cookie butts. Um, I had a question for you about Rocket League and you did yeah. something recently in Rocket League that you hadn't done before. And oh? Yeah, you you changed a few settings. Oh <laughs> shit! I totally forgot about this. Yes, yes, I did. Um, yeah. So yeah, apparently um, there are camera settings in Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't know. I I was just using the the default camera settings, which is uh, ridiculous. Um, I changed them to Josh's values, and it feels like a totally different game. <laughs> it is weird. It like totally messed me up. I was missing everything for. I mean, I still miss everything because I saw. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I was totally missing everything after changing the camera around, but it makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, Josh and Adam, is there any place you would recommend to go to for camera settings? Are there any like tutorials or tips or like a uh, web page so that you go to? There's, there's yeah. this thing about camera settings, and a lot of people just assume, or not assume, but. There's there's too much emphasis on camera settings. People are like, well, what is this pro pay- player? What's his camera settings? Mm-hmm. And what's this pro play- player's camera settings? Which camera settings are better? And it's there is it's no better. There is no right. better. There are the settings that you like, and you have to experiment with them. Absolutely. But, like I I spend a long time on my camera settings. Like I change mine all the time. I changed mine recently. <laughs> you know i'll change stiffness i'll change field of view um because everything is all a give and take like maybe you'll maybe you like your field of view at 110 but maybe the next week you're like nah, let's bring it down to 100 i don't want to deal with that distortion or let's find a middle like 105 102 you know let's find mm-hmm. something that you want and that's all going to be on you um some people yeah. like their camera a little higher you might really like yours at 110 you know i like mine dirt nasty low so mine's at 100 <laughs> <laughs> Dirt nasty load. I love that saying. Yeah, certainly, you have to figure out how you want to see the game and mm-hmm. how that's going to make you play. So the default camera settings have a low field of view, uh, pretty close up on the car, and what this does is it decreases the visibility of the field. Right. But if you turn the FOV up too high, then you start to get that fisheye lens effect, and it kind of it messes with your depth perception a little bit, and then when the ball is going from one side of your screen towards the center, it affects how fast you perceive that ball moving because either the camera is, you know, flat like a flat lens or a curved around the edges. Um, it's just finding, it's just finding out how you want to see the game and how you play with it. Right. I gotta say though, like especially so the the default camera is pretty zoomed in. It's got the mm-hmm. camera shake. Uh, it's got a smaller FOV. Tuning up that FOV and pulling the camera back 
gives mm-hmm. me so much more map awareness. I yes. now know where the ball is because it, with the default Rocket League camera, I would hit the ball. It would blast off of the screen and the ball would be uh-huh. you know over here somewhere, but I couldn't see it. With that mm-hmm. field of view pulled back, yeah. I can now see where that ball is almost all the time unless it totally yeah. crosses the court and yeah. some people take that when they first change their settings they take that and they're like oh cool well i'll just turn that all the way up and then i'll turn my distance all the way up and i can see everything right and the problem with that is is there's a trade-off you can see more things but your car is further from the camera so when you're trying to hit the ball a certain way it's it's harder to aim because you're not as close to it you can't see you know as easily what part of your hitbox is hitting which part of the ball so, you know, it's if you true. have your settings closer, you're right up on the ball and you can see exactly how you're going to hit the ball. You know, if you want to hit the bottom right edge of the ball with the corner of your front hitbox to hit it, you know, with maximum power in that specific direction, you know, if your car is really tiny on the screen, it's hard to see that, you know? Right. And I, yeah. I kind of like, um, there's a couple other settings that change, um, like how you perceive, uh, like, how you how you deal with a like, camera swap like when you you're focusing on the camera and you're not focusing on the uh, or you focus on the ball and you're not focusing on the ball and that transition mm-hmm. speed like I have kind of old man yeah. eyes so when things like snap yeah. like I, I can't deal uh-huh. with it it gives me a headache so I have that a little and bit the, smoother same thing with swivel mm-hmm. speed all of that those are all the settings cam- that you can set to your your the camera stiffness is it's how uh, swingy the camera is when it needs to move. So mm-hmm. if you have the camera stiffness all the way up, it like locks to the back of the car really tightly. And if you have it down, it'll kind of sway slowly as it needs to. So your eyes don't have to adjust to such quick movement and camera angles. Right. And, and, sa- and same no. thing when you change camera stiffness, if you accelerate, it lets the camera like drag behind you a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like it won't. Mm-hmm. So like as you accelerate, it kind of pulls back gradually, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting because the camera automatically zooms back when you hit um, when you hit your top speed which is supersonic. When you hit supersonic, the camera snaps back a little bit. So if you have your camera sniffed at 100, it'll snap the whole thing back instead of gradually pulling back. There's all sorts of crazy stuff that you want to get into uh, when you start playing with the camera settings. But really, it doesn't matter when you get down to it. RS Gamer, probably one of the best Rocket League players in our Discord, um, plays with default camera. (laughs) Yeah. The (laughs) The only thing you absolutely have to do absolutely have to do is turn, turn camera, camera shake off. off just do yeah. yourself a favor it's just distracting I, it's just not it's camera. just not okay yeah don't just i, that I think it, it looks <laughs> nice i i like the way it makes the game feel because when something blows it. up or when you connect yeah. it, it really you feel it right it totally gives the camera this nice little just just a little bit of shape yeah. right but, it's um, so incredibly it's, distracting. it's important yes, though uh, and i sh- <laughs> i showed people why I, I i always take people into uh, a custom match and i show them why camera shake is on by default and i sit mm-hmm. the, and, and what we do is we don't boost you don't flip at anything and you just drive the mm-hmm. ball and you play yeah. and when you do yeah. that you see that it really elevates the intensity of the game up a lot especially yeah. if you're not flipping and jumping and rolling and boosting and doing all the crazy stuff like if you're not doing any of that stuff it really makes the game fun and active and there's stuff going on and it otherwise it's really dry and quiet and boring you know it's it's a good way to that's why people stick around is because you know it's things yeah. like that camera shake makes things exciting yeah uh and we have gotten an official complaint uh, from the chat room about our excessive Rocket League talk, so I'd like to switch to Dark Souls. Yes. So today, I loaded up Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, and me too. So did, so did our good friend Jesse and Josh, and we're going to do a co-op play. We didn't actually play, but let's talk Dark Souls for about yeah. 30 to 40 minutes is what I'm thinking. At Dark Souls 3 least. is on sale right now on Steam. It is, and uh, it is... 15 I don't even bucks. have that listed. No, 15 bucks? Oh, that's a hell of a steal. You owe it to yourself oh, yeah. to buy Dark Souls 3. And Let's say you don't want to spend 15 bucks. Dark Souls 1, probably cheaper. You should probably just go <laughs> in and buy that. It's a terrible PC port. Don't use mouse and keyboard. Use controller only. Do yourself a favor. Get a wired 360 controller. They're cheap. Plug it in. Play the Absolutely. game. It's fantastic. Speaking of uh, Dark Souls, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a good friend of ours uh, uh, told me about um, a kind of anime e Dark Souls that's coming out called Code Vein. Mm-hmm. And it yes, looks pretty that. cool. Yeah, talking about that. yeah, that was Dark Soul Invader. He also is a fan of Dark Souls. He ended up playing a bunch of Bloodborne. Uh, and I was watching oh, him, and that yeah. game looks amazing. 
Bloodborne God, is. I, <sighs> I haven't played any of From Software's games much. I played Dark Souls one for like an hour or two. I really, really want to play Bloodborne. I just wish I had a PS4. <laughs> I have a it's PS4 so and I still haven't got Bloodborne. Why, oh, Sony? Man. Why is this an exclusive? It's hurting <laughs> oh, me on the inside. It's so good. Oh, the, the cathedrals and the, that gothic tone to the whole thing. Oh, and the God. music. Even the music is The music is, great. is incredible. I listen to that soundtrack sometimes. Everything about that game. It, it just it drips stylistic integrity. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, so, so, Josh, what, what have you been playing this week? Not a whole lot. Played some Rocket League. You guys want to talk about that? Yeah. yeah. Let's so about let's that talk for about, about Rocket League. So yeah, I was uh, I played some of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing too crazy. Just did my basic games. Um, you know, uh, the the few that we talked about. I also got back into some Bayonetta, which still a really great game. I, um, I I still haven't finished it. I'm most of the way done. Um, but it's really cool. It's scales so well like from beginning to end it's just ramping up i can't wait to finish it um then hopefully i can get on two and three at some point soon <laughs> i i am buying these when they hit the switch because they are hitting the switch i know that's so exciting three. well not I'm just so hitting excited. not just hitting the switch but they're being remastered and putting and porting to the switch yes. which is pretty yes. cool and i'm really excited about that concept i'd love to play through um uh, like a remastered version of uh Bayonetta 2 when it comes out. That's what I'm kind of most pumped for is actually continuing the series. It's just so cheesy and campy and fun, but like it really is like if you guys haven't played Bayonetta, if anyone hasn't played Bayonetta, please give it a shot. It is yeah. so fun. It's really funny and campy and stupid, but it's just a really <laughs> fun ride. It's is it on sale? Maybe that's a good segue. Let's see what's going oh, yeah, on here. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let, let, let's see if that's on sale. I'm curious because if uh, the only downside to all this uh, to uh, Bayonetta on the Switch is I don't think it can be one of my commuter games. No, no, it cannot. <laughs> I, I would be so embarrassed to play that in public just because it's so campy and it. I mean. Okay, so with Bayonetta, she's a witch. It's like a Devil May Cry style game, and she she murders all kinds of uh, angels. I think it's what right. She's yeah, it's, yeah, it's like witches versus angels sort of deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she doesn't actually wear clothes. She is a sky clad nude witch, uh, and her hair magically becomes clothes, like tight leather clothes. And and some of her attacks when she's using her hair in weird ways, those will just fly off to attack angels. Right, because, uh, I mean, her hair has to be used for other purposes. That makes perfect yeah, sense. I get it. <laughs> not really something you can play in public uh, and, and be comfortable. At so. least I couldn't. I have some shame left. Not much. Some I am on shame. the 72-pin connector podcast, but yes. just a dab. Damn, Savage. So, anyway, it is 50% off on Steam right now. It is it is nine ninety nine, my friends. Oh, so all right. Treat yourself and play this stupid, stupid, treat stupid, yourself. stupid game. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. I have no idea. Yeah, really, just do it. Don't even. Don't even continue. <laughs> don't, don't even think about it. Just, just buy it right. Yeah, just yeah. Buy. Just buy. Don't buy. 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 But I mean, there's a bunch of games that are on sale. Um, do you guys feel like going into that now? Uh, yeah, we can we can list off a few here. Uh, I mean, to the moon. I mentioned that. Uh, two bucks. Yes. I mean, go go grab that. Uh, or I'm sorry, sorry. Two fifty. It's two fifty. Oh, oh um, my god! False information. Yeah. Right. Which um, is what probably a dollar per hour <laughs> of gameplay. Yeah. It, it was about is, four hours. You look at it that way. Four really? Okay, three or four. Seven. In all so fairness, I just bought played two. I bought two um, two anime DVDs for um, yeah for for my sister in law, yeah. and those were thirty six dollars a a pop. <laughs> so yeah, let's not. I, I shouldn't have even brought that up because I hate that discussion, and we yeah. talked about this before. So <laughs> Good point. All right. Thing. Anyway, now that we're done talking, the moon will make you cry, and it's worth two dollars and fifty cents. Buy it. It's one of the most emotionally. It's probably the emotionally most emotionally touching story I've ever experienced in a video game. And it's not, yeah. there's not really much of any gameplay. You can kind of walk no. around and inspect things until you inspect the thing that triggers the next cutscene of really interesting dialogue. Yeah, but, it's, uh, it's, it's, a it's an experience. above walking simulator. It's a slightly interactive story, and it is an incredible story. It's, I can't recommend it enough. Don't let the 
the cheapness of what it looks like when you look at the Steam page fool you. And Mr. Veggie Man is, is also pointing out that if you wanted to play this mobile so you can cry on the bus on your way to work, <laughs> it is available on uh, Android and iOS as well. Oh, is it really? That's yeah, crazy. I'm, I'm going to check on that price for, for Android at least. That way you can assure your coworkers, no, I'm not crying because I have to come into work today. It was this video game I was playing on the way here. Right, I love right. it here. <laughs> so yeah, uh, To the Moon, totally recommended. Uh, Inside, if you haven't played the uh, sequel to, why am I blanking on the name? Damn it's not it. a sequel. Well, but it's well, not it's, a sequel. It's, it's not a sequel. It's kind of in the same universe. Kind of? Yeah. Kinda. There's some stuff. But the next, uh, what is it, Play Dead? studios yeah are you so talking about limbo they made is is limbo yeah. and then yeah. this one is inside yeah yeah inside excellent game got a bunch of awards uh it's kind of short it's very uh what's the word ambiguous absolutely uh, you're not gonna really know what's going on and when it gets done you're gonna be like i don't really know what happened but yeah <laughs> I, liked, I liked it and i'm intrigued <laughs> i think and i think it was there are there are some pretty uh, there's some metaphors to what everything means. There are multiple th fan theories, um, all of which is interesting if you look that up after you play. Uh, good, good experience. Absolutely love that game. It was really cool. Uh, the end. Of Soma was good. I, I, can't, I always mention Soma, so I'm not going to harp on this again. But probably my favorite horror game of all time. Excellent story. Uh, the story's better than the horror. And if you don't like horror games, this has a uh what's it called safe mode tom or, mode yeah you, <laughs> you can play mode. through an experience of story <laughs> without having to worry about dying or like the monster encounters so much so uh pick that up uh the portal series first yes. game is a dollar the second game a is what three fucking dollar so portal 2 is what three dollars or something it's it's, yeah. it's two dollars it's just these oh, games shit. have been out a while if you don't already own portal you're making a mistake and you can easily rectify that mistake with a very small amount of dollars. I mean, those are some of the best games I've ever played. Uh, huge yeah. influential. Uh, just play them. They're excellent. The writing is great. The gameplay is great. I mean, it's it's one of the last games Valve ever put out before they yeah. stopped being a video game company and started being a Steam company. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's it's excellent. And Portal 2... It's it's even better. Somehow they topped mm -hmm. the greatness that was Portal. So pick those up. Uh, Hyper Light Drifter, fun game, amazing visual aesthetic, just mm -hmm. absolutely gorgeous pixel art, Soundtrack, fantastic incredible. sound. Um, the the controls are are tight. Use a controller. Don't don't keyboard and mouse this. You don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. Um, but absolutely great game. Uh, indie indie game. Ten bucks. Go get it. Fun. Also. Fun. Fun fact on Hyperlight Drifter: the guy that did that mm -hmm. awesome soundtrack also did the soundtrack from a movie uh, called um, "Oh My God, It Follows," mm, right? uh -huh. which is also a good soundtrack and very creepy soundtrack. Uh, it's kind of a—I don't want to say a cult hit because I don't know how popular it is. At, at least with it gets a lot of it gets a, it gets <laughs> yeah. a lot of love in the horror movie genre. So "It Follows" was cool, but yeah, same uh, guy. Undertale, one of my favorite uh, RPGs of all time, easily, easily favorite. I, yeah, I fucking love Undertale. So I, I feel the way about Undertale, like I feel about Rick and Morty. I love them both, and I hate the communities associated with both. Hands down, worst communities of all time, <laughs> cringy to the the nth degree. Like it's it's just bad. Uh, but Undertale is fantastic. Avoid the community completely. Do not Google anything about Undertale. Do not go to a wiki. Don't get a strategy guide. Don't look up anything about the game. Or screenshots. Go completely blind. Ble yes. Absolutely do not look at screenshots. Just <laughs> totally blind. Go into it. Uh, $5. Uh, it is one of the best games I have played. Uh, I think it came out last year. I think that was my game of the year 2016. Undertale oh, just nice. wiped the floor with everything around it because it was just so goddamn good. <laughs> really is. Um, looks like the the division is down uh, to twenty dollars. Uh, when when division came out, it was real real bad. Apparently, a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of bad reviews. But apparently, they've done a whole bunch of updates to it um, and really you know pulled it into shape. And it's actually supposed to be quite good now. Um, mm -hmm. 
I am very interested in trying it out. Uh, it seems really, it looks really good. I've been watching a bunch of it. Um, I might give, I might pick this one up. So when trying to get into this game, um, not the division, this game I'm going to mention, I made the mistake of trying to go through the first and second, uh, and those missteps have been well documented on this podcast. Don't make my mistake. Jump right into the Witcher three game of the year edition for 20 bucks. It is wonderful. Even the shitty little side quests are fully voice acted they're mo-capped they've got you know really nice in-depth uh backstories that will tie you into the world mm-hmm. and totally worth twenty dollars it's actually it's a fucking steal it's probably a crime to sell that much <laughs> content for twenty dollars yeah um the That's every time game. i play yeah every time i play the witcher 3 I, I sit down and say okay cool i've got about an hour and then i'm gonna head to bed i'm just gonna play a little bit of the witcher 3 and then it's fucking four in the morning and i've got to go to work in a couple hours like mm-hmm. That shit sucks, and The Witcher 3 does that to me constantly. I have never been able to play it for any less than three hours. It is a wonderful game that will suck you into the world. When their story DLC starts getting Game of the Year awards, you know, yeah. you're onto something. Yeah, that's true. Not, not the main game, just the fucking DLC got a Game of the Year award. That's insane. Um, next one I have on here, uh, Planet Coaster. 20 bucks. I did play a bunch of this. It's really good. A lot of crazy stuff you can do in it. Absolutely check it out. Um, another one that we sh- that we have on the cast all the time is a postcast game. All the time. Uh, <laughs> GTA 5 is down to $24. That's really good because that one will forever be $60. <laughs> if, if you want this game at all, please buy it now because it like price drops for GTA just don't happen. Yeah. yeah. Not only should you need them, it's still a good re- game. It still sells a ridiculous amount of copies at sixty dollars, and they're still yeah, releasing content. <laughs> yeah. They just released even, more content for it. Even if you never play online, even if you just stick to the single player, it is still one of the best single player campaigns I've played in a long time. It's a great game, absolutely. And also, never uninstall it. Someone's always going to be around to play it. Just and it's yeah. like eighty gigs takes you four years to yeah, install. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> buy a hard drive then buy this game. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hollow Knight. I have brief experience with this game, but I want to have more experience with this game. I just have so many other games that I'm trying to get through and play and experience. But Hollow Knight is a really, really, really well done uh, Metroidvania game. Uh, awesome soundtrack. Cool. Uh, it's just a... Uh, it's got charm. I heard it everything was... Everything is just so polished and well made. I heard it was really long, too, and for $10... Yeah, it's surprisingly it's, long. Yeah, uh, it's pretty difficult too it's not going to hold your hand uh but it's it's really really good cuphead along similar veins yeah of being really difficult and not holding your hand not at all gonna hold your hand Cuphead's 16 bucks it's not a huge discount but that was one of the coolest games i've experienced um it got super that high for a while and yeah so jazzy <laughs> it's really just an exceptional piece of art um, if you've got the problem that I have, uh, which is just one more turn, then I'll go to bed. Uh, Civilization VI is only $30, so you too can get nuked by Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to be nuked by Gandhi. Oh, it's it's great. It's just a fun time. I actually, I should have my wife uh, guest star on this show for this next game, because I only know about it because she constantly plays it and tells me about it. The mm-hmm. Long Dark is only $9 right now, and I believe it is out of early access. Uh, she is in Twitch chat, so she can confirm. Uh, but it is one of the better, you know, hardcore survival survival games, not like mm-hmm. apocalyptic survival. Like, you are in the Alaska wilderness, you gotta survive. Cutting up furniture, uh, you know, finding food, going hunting. Uh, it looks like a complete package in the graphical, uh, like the, the graphics and the art aesthetic uh is beautiful it makes low poly just fucking gorgeous um so pick that up if you're into those survival type of games oh i'm sorry sorry not alaskan it's uh canadian canadian wilderness yeah so don't worry even if you die even if you die there is national health care they will pick you up it's not like you'll die in alaska and they'll just like roll you down a hill uh Mm -hmm. this is canada they actually care about people they'll apologize (laughs) and stitch you right back up yep (laughs) 
Ori in the Blind Blind Forest. Uh, this was a magical game. I haven't played it, but it got a lot of love. Uh, I don't want to say similar to Hollow Knight, but it's in the same vein of really beautiful, well put together uh, platformer. Um, it's like I said, it just it's had a lot of love. It's ten bucks now. Yeah, and it's it's a Metroidvania that I have not launched yet. I own it. I oh, want to play it. it. Nice. Yeah, but I have never played it before. You should. Hmm. Let us know I how really it is. should. I should stream, stream that. It. Yeah. And the last on this list, Little Nightmares, is ten bucks. Um, probably one of the best games I played this year. Loved Little Nightmares. Um, really excellent. It's got this weird. It's kind of a horror game, and it's kind of charming in a way. You mm. play as a little kid, and it's just it's got this really interesting world built built into it. It's a little bit. It's a little bit Tim Burton. It's a little bit horror it's a little bit uh what was that little game like little inferno or something or what was the what was that playstation platformer game where you play as a little like sock puppet dude are you talking uh, about little big planets little big planet, little big little, planet. Yeah. yeah okay yeah the, the gameplay is a little bit like that oh, okay it's a little bit that okay. little bit, uh kind of like inside meets little yeah, little whatever. spooky it's little good. horror if you look at the video just go to the scene page look at the video uh, everything will make sense Unlike my description. <laughs> video. Speaking it's of really like, good though. It's one of the best things I've played this year. That's awesome. Speaking of like weird, uh, charming horror games, something like a horror game. You, you played some, some interesting game recently, didn't you, Adam? You played, uh, you played a little hello neighbor. Yeah. That was yeah, some you bought me hello neighbor. I know. Thanks I did. for that, by the way. Hey, no problem. I appreciate man. that. Um, I had, uh, man, <laughs> I had an experience with this game for about an hour and a half. Uh huh. I didn't know what to do. It was so frustrating. I didn't know what to do. Uh, you're, <laughs> the little cutscene opens up, and you're this kid, and you're kicking your ball down the middle of the street like any safe suburban kid should be doing. Um, and you kick it in front of this guy's house, and you're looking in his... Uh, living room mirror and you see that he has captured somebody and she's screaming and he locks her in this room and locks the door and throws the key on the the table next to it and you know goes off about his business and you the intelligent kid that you are decides to uh explore that house and it's basically it's weird because the aesthetic of the game is very bright and colorful and cartoony but it is so tense because you've got this dude walking around his house, this AI, and you have to try to do whatever it is you need to do. Uh, I'm assuming find that key, which I could not find. Wow. But, I ended up spending a long time watching people play this game. Yeah. I spent a ton of time watching people play this game. And when mm-hmm. the longer I took, uh, watching people play this game, the more I realize that this game is ridiculous. Like some <laughs> of the challenges that they make you go through in order to actually uh-huh. make things happen are insane. Yeah. There's situations where you have to put uh, a uh, what is it like a a vinyl like a turntable mm-hmm. in front of a te- in front of a plant to make it grow. It gets oh. hmm. absolutely insane as far as like the puzzles that you're supposed to choose, do and pull off. It really reminds me a lot of uh, the monkey wrench thing from, uh, what was it? Uh, monkey Island? That point and click oh, adventure? It, yeah. it, it's one of those games, that, that's one of the puzzles that was notoriously difficult, where it was like, how the hell was I supposed to figure that out? Kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's not really a, a good thing, though. That's why adventure it's, games uh, kind of went yeah. by the wayside, because you know, okay, so how do you sneak into a building? Oh, well, you get some cat fur and duct tape, and you make a fake mustache to sneak into this back room. Like, fucking really? Seriously? <laughs> and yeah. I imagine this game would run afoul of a lot of those problems. So, uh, the one, yeah. the one it, thing I saw that I really did like, though, is that uh, it did prove to me, and I just watched it, I didn't even play it, but uh, it proves that you can have a cartoony, almost cell-shaded, uh, happy aesthetic and mm-hmm. still make a horror game out of it. Like, your oh, horror yeah. game does not have to be browns and grays and dreary monsters running everywhere. Yeah. It can be a happy little suburban street and fucking terrifying. 
Right. It's it's the it's tense. You're being chased. You're you're being stealthy. You're trying not to be seen by this guy, and he's setting traps. Um, I think the AI is adaptive, from what I've. It is right. Yeah. So if he catches you in certain places, he'll start putting traps there, and uh, it's it's buggy. It's really buggy. I did notice that. Yeah, that's and one thing that they did mention a lot. The part I'm worried about, and some reviews said this, and this game has got, I want to say mixed reviews, mostly positive, but mixed. I'm worried that some of the puzzles are hard for the sake of being hard, but not in like a good game design way, in like a, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Well, yeah, like, I agree, because really there's, there's a situation... I mean, there's like, situations. I don't know if I'm even supposed to be able to do this kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. That's what a lot of people were were experiencing. There was like mm-hmm. situations where they had to move the train so that the train was uh, showed up at a certain point, so you can jump on a pipe and climb up this thing. There's other situations mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, make sure that you have to you have to recreate how the room looks. You have to, in another one, you have to like make sure you put all find all four pieces of cake and put it around the tea set and make sure you put the mannequins also in the same room. And so that what? it triggers some yes it's crazy some of the stuff like oh get a binoculars and look down this one hallway so you can see the code on the other end of the hallway that you had no idea was even there and then make sure that you enter that code in a separate room to make sure that you can move that bench that you didn't know actually moved and it yeah. becomes automated it sounds back and like forth awful game design have it they... is it is at its yeah, very core that's... again i i circle back to you have to find a turntable and i don't know what's it called <laughs> the one that actually has the the um the the speaker on the top that comes out. It's an old timey oh, kind of thing. Um, uh, anyway, you have to find one of those and you have to put it in front of a seed that you plant that you have to find somewhere else and you have to make the tree grow and the tree grows in real time. So when so you actually have to wait for it to finish growing every time you get ta- <laughs> caught the time, the yeah, phonograph. Thank you. That's actually exactly right. Um, I was thinking of a uh, gramophone. And it's just oh. oh, gramophone's probably right too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know my stuff. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. But either way, uh, <laughs> you have to do all of this stuff, and and like there's a lot of the stuff that like it seems like it does ramp up. Yeah, it is a gramophone. Um, it does ramp up. Apparently, like most people get to the third chapter, which takes forever, and it's really difficult. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it, like in a lot of in a lot of regards, and it's kind of a bummer because it actually looked really cool, and I liked it the had idea a lot of, of it. Promise. Yeah, I I still want to give it another shot. Um, I'm not just going to dismiss it after an hour and a half, but I did play for an hour and a half and made zero progress. Yeah, that's pretty frustrating in a puzzle based game. Without, I mean, the only direction I have is I think I'm supposed to find some key somewhere that isn't in a place that I know that I can get to yet. So. Yeah, I mean, there was one situation where the game has been doing that kind of shit for that long, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a situation where you're in a hotel room, and then you all you really have to do is wait, and then the key shows up on the floor. So you saw, <laughs> I saw streamers tearing apart the room trying to put like, you know, all the silverware in the oven and close it shut when really yeah. they just slipped the key under the door after a while. Oh, huh. So it, it just really it just really depends, like you know what I mean? Like I like I don't know. It it seems like it's really more of a poor game design than anything. Like it seems like they had a lot of these really cool ideas there, but there's no way for you to know that. Like put the globe inside the freezer because of global warming. <laughs> like how do you <laughs> that'll fix it. That's the like that. that's like the that, idea though. that that's I, the idea I, that you're getting. Really, I, I'm kind of excited because I think people are going to take this sort of happy aesthetic horror game uh, mm-hmm. and they're going to take it to new places without all this extra baggage that Hello Neighbor has. Yeah. Um, and I, I, think, I think it'll be a good thing overall, but this game is probably going to fail because it's just, it's got the adventure game problem and that's it's the same thing adventure games run into unless your puzzles are... Uh, make logical sense uh you've got you know cat hair mustaches running around oh yeah i mean it's interesting because they still come out with puzzle games they still come out with those point and click adventures like uh like whitney's been playing a a shitload of them recently just like just grinding through a bunch of them so 
you know, this sort of difficulty has not only been, like, this sort of game has existed and still exists today, and people mm-hmm. get through them, and they're fun, and they're good. Like, I don't understand why these guys didn't, like, think about, like, basic core game design when going into it. It just seems... Like, you played One Shot, right? Like, yeah, I feel like One Shot is closer to what you'd expect as far as a puzzle design. Like, you know, you, you hit a wall, but then you're like, oh, yeah, I figured it out, and then everything kind of falls mm-hmm. into place. That's yeah. not how this game goes you're, at you all. Have kind of an idea of what you might need to do or right. what you might need to find. Um, this is very much just... Maybe you have to do something, and you have no way of knowing what that is. So and you- like and that it doesn't have to be ineffective. I mean, it's kind of poor game design, but it doesn't have to be ineffective because think of PT, right? The hugely acclaimed horror thing that uh, Konami made. Yeah, and none of that. None of that is intuitive. Right. Right. And, but that was kind of the point, is because it was supposed to be this whole thing that the whole community had to figure out so that you could see what the last trailer was and oh it's silent hills but then it got canceled and that sucks but (laughs) you know it was intentionally that way by design and you know does hello neighbor have that payoff at the end is it something where the community is working together to find out these super obscure puzzles with no direction or is it just kind of a mess i don't don't know but well i I mean it's it's a bummer I I want to at least solve a couple puzzles and get the feel for it. Yeah. Because even if it's really abstract and really obtuse, it can still be fun to try to figure out those batshit insane things. Maybe Hello Neighbor is actually Frog Fractions 3. (laughs) I don't know. You lost me. Well, anyway, uh, I hope I hope I've this got game. I've documentary to share with you. <laughs> well, I hope I hope that this. I mean, it's kind of sucks that it's like a game that I got you. It is so frustratingly bad in some regard, but it could be good. Yeah. I don't know. But you got another game recently. Uh, yeah. How did that go? This was good. Um, this was Twelve Games of Christmas. This was my last one from Eric, and he got me Spelunky. And this is a game that I've never played. Surprisingly. Um, Spelunky is, which we've talked about this on the cast, what, the past, like, a week or two ago? Two or three weeks ago? I love Spelunky, and I need it to be on the Switch, (laughs) goddammit! But Spelunky is uh, one of the earlier roguelikes, kinda? When did that, when did that emerge? Uh, Let me, let me look, cause he... I don't want to call it the the, original roguelike or anything. Oh yeah, there's no way. It's something that (laughs) The popularized. original roguelike is a game called yeah, rogue. rogue. Yeah, which I haven't played, but I have. It's, it's but uh, uh, first old. roguelike I played was The Binding of Isaac. I got really into that, and then from there I started liking games like the like that. Uh, we I played a lot of Risk of Rain, which we'll talk about the sequel of that briefly in a, a little bit. Um, Risk of Rain, Enter the Gungeon, Nuclear Throne. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I played that's kind of roguelike e. But uh, tons of Binding of Isaac. Love that genre of game. You know, that's, you know, I'm always looking for new games like that to play. And then there's Spelunky, which came before all of those games. And 2008. Spelunky is one of the, yeah, Spelunky is one of the uh, Rogue Legacy as well, which I haven't played either. Um, But Spelunky is kind of predates those. Spelunky is a huge influence to the Binding of Isaac. Anybody that's interviewed the developer of the Binding of Isaac will tell you that Spelunky was a huge influence. But I hadn't played Spelunky. So Eric was like, well, hey, he likes these type of games. Play this one that influenced influenced all of those games. So it was really interesting to play to play it because I could see exactly, I could see the influence immediately. I can and it was I don't want to say it's rough, but you can tell it's kind of early. You know what I mean? Like it's early on in the that kind of genre of game. It didn't mm-hmm. look quite as polished, but it was it was fun. It was charming. It was difficult. It was random. <laughs> and I died a lot. <laughs> it sounds like a roguelike. <laughs> yeah. I repeatedly made stupid mistakes and then realized I made stupid mistakes. Yeah. It's one of those games where you're like as soon as you die, you know what you did wrong. And I like those type of games because that's how you learn. That is true. But yeah, Splunky, yeah. Splunky is awesome. I'm going to play that some more. 
Do do do. Well, yeah. I guess that's all. All you did? Did you play anything? Oh, I think that's all your games, mm-hmm. mad dude. Yeah. We we went through quite a lot of games fun. today. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. But okay, we're gonna we're gonna blast the news quickly because we do have a group topic to cover tonight. Seeing as it is two days before Christmas. Mm. Um. Uh, Aonuma, who is responsible, like one of the head guys for Zelda, like he is the man right now, uh, has already confirmed. That work has on the next Zelda has begun, um, which isn't at all surprising. Usually, when you've got a big franchise like Zelda or yeah. Mario, when you complete your your big flagstone title, it's celebrate for like you know an Ten hour minutes. or two, <laughs> and then and then they're like, "All right, let's That's get to work on the sequel." And they'd be um, they'd be stupid not to. Breath of the Wild was so immensely yeah. successful; everybody would be so mad if there wasn't another Zelda game coming to the Switch or something. Oh yeah, I, so, I guarantee you this will be out on the Switch. Kind of a given. Um, it'll it'll be years before we hear anything about it. But uh, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, Destiny two players are still pissed at Bungie because they fucked up like a three of coins thing. They fucked up a holiday thing. It looked like a cash grab. We already talked about that in the intro. Mm-hmm. Um, Nexus mods, one of the probably the modding site uh, oh, so to good. download to yeah. download mods for every, anything and everything um, is actually going to start paying mod creators. Um, okay. So the, the way it'll work is actually pretty interesting. Um, there's going to be a donation pool uh, and people, uh, users will be able to contribute money to the pool. At the end of every month, and I'm, I'm taking this right from Kotaku, this will be in our show notes so we can link to them. Um, so let's see. The total amount in the fund will be divided up and transferred into the equivalent amount of donation points. Uh, each modder will then get a, an amount of donation points equivalent to the proportion of their overall number of unique downloads. Kind of like okay. how Spotify pays musicians. Um, so if the total money donated is ten thousand um, dollars. Then they're going to split it up, and if you get you know a whole bunch of downloads, um, you'll get uh, fifty dollars for uh, to redeem in their storefront. Uh, which you can either um, spend them on things in their store, uh, which is kind of interesting. They're saying like uh, PC hardware is going to be in here, uh, or you can cash it out through PayPal uh, or get Amazon gift cards. So okay. really cool idea. I really love this. It it really encourages people to make uh, high quality mods in the yeah. hopes of attracting people to download them. There's no paywall. There's no nothing. It's uh, the community saying, hey, I love you guys. I love your mods. I love getting stuff from you. Here's a mm-hmm. bundle of money. Give it to yeah. the people who deserve it. Now, what mod, would be cool... Mods, mods are not easy to make. A lot of no. people put a whole lot of heart and soul and work and hours into making these mods. Uh, yeah. It's not unreasonable to maybe throw them some money once in a while to well, you know, we, help them out. We forget all the time that entire genres of video games have been created through fucking mods, right? The Battle Royale games that we've all been playing recently started out as mods of popular titles. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, Counter-Strike was a mod. Dota was a mod. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. mods and modders that have grown up through this games industry and are actually releasing full, gigantic games of their own. Uh, mods make the world go round, and yeah. <laughs> this I think this is good for everyone. I really like Absolutely. what Nexus is doing, and if I'm a modder, there's no way that I'm going to put my stuff on the Steam Workshop and that's it. I'm yeah. totally going to put it on <laughs> Nexus mods. As a matter of fact, this might drive me to not use the Steam Workshop at all and go to Nexus, because I know if people have to go there and download it, that's one more download on my board. That's that's one more penny in, in whatever check they're going to write me. It's true. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, um, Adam. Yeah. Why don't you tell me about Risk of Rain 2? Yeah, there's, there's a Risk of Rain 2, and they're working on it. So, Risk of, Wa- Risk of Rain was an excellent game. We played a lot of this. Uh, it's a 2D, um, platformer, roguelike thing. It's a lot of fun, and this was that was their first game, I believe. Uh, it was 2D. I think it was built on the Game Maker engine. Um, and Risk of Rain 2 uh, is going to be a 3D game, and it's going to be their first 3D game. So it looks... This will be interesting. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, 
I'm kind of worried, you know, I think they had a really good thing going with the format they had. And, and there was an interview on this article, which we'll link into the show notes where they talk about kind of the challenges that they've had going to 3d after having a 2d game, um, specifically with like how the enemies worked, uh, you know, some enemies they had to add long ranged attacks to that didn't have them in the first game because they were too easy to kill in 3d because you can kite them in more dimensions than just the two. And, you know, given this is their first 3d game, I'm sure they're learning a lot in the process and it's going to take some time, but we got a couple of gifts. Uh, so we get to see what the game looks like in action a little bit. And they talked about it a bit. Um, I'm hesitantly excited for this, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on because I loved risk of rain. So check I out. never got into it. I know I played it a couple times with you guys. I just, I never played it outside of that. Uh, it's good. It's, uh, it's one of those, the more you play, the more you get out of it. And it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, Apple says, uh, apps must now disclose the odds for loot boxes. Uh, so this is interesting. It's a brand new rule added to the iOS app store. If your game has loot boxes, uh, you have to, how does this new rule read? Uh, apps offering loot boxes or other mechaniz mechanisms that provide randomized virtual items for purchase must disclose the odds of receiving each type of item to customers prior to purchase. Um, so yeah, this is interesting. Um, and I would, I would really like to see this happen everywhere. So yeah, it's kind of cool, kind of nice. Yeah. Um, and it, I'm sure that because Apple is now requiring this, um, we're going to see other games, even over on Android, start to do this as well if they draw from a common base to build their uh, their mobile binaries out of, to, to build their games out of. Um, and in small news, uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew removes the VR requirement. So you can buy this game, and even if you don't have a VR headset, and play with people, even if they do. Um, so that's cool. I haven't played it. So it's on yeah. sale. Check it out. It yeah. is on sale. <laughs> uh, so, guys, yes, we've got a question for you. Okay, I'm gonna start with the easy one. Yes. All right, what is your favorite Christmas slash winter level in a video game? Christmas slash Christmas winter slash level. Winter. Yeah, so it can be winter but not Christmassy, right? Yeah, it can be like because... totally like an ice world. Okay, so one of my favorite moments. And this is kind of a spoiler, so I'm hesitant to get too much into this. But the winter act of The Last of Us was one of my top moments in gaming because it was so unexpected. And I'm not going to say why it's unexpected. Most people probably know by now. But because that's such a good game, maybe not everybody's played it. I don't want to spoil that because that was such an important moment. But the winter part of The Last of Us... Incredible for me. <laughs> hmm. I like, um, it's hard to pick, but I typically really like MMOs and how they do mm. winter events. Um, one that uh, me and uh, my wife played a lot was Vindictus, and they had a really cool, like, there's like a main hub world, and then you go from there and you do, like, uh, you know, missions out of there but you always come back to the same hub world and they like made everything snowy and they put a big tree in the middle and it was like everyone had like uh you know like reindeer outfits and stuff it, it was like it's all done up and ridiculous and i just mm -hmm. i loved it it was so cool it was so fun just to come into something like that and have everything overhauled um but fortnite does a great job about doing that recently too yeah. with christmas. their it's recent so christmas shiny. it's so christmasy so so, I don't know if you guys have ever played Killing Floor. I saw somebody mention it in chat. Mm -hmm. um, I had bought Killing Floor uh, on like a Steam sale, I think, during Christmas time, and they were doing a Christmas event. So my first experience with the game was the Christmas event. And Killing Floor is a first-person shooter where you're fighting hordes of uh, enemies, you know, kind of like in wave format. Um, and all these enemies in the game during the Christmas event were evil snowmen and a uh, giant grotesque Santa Claus and like super mean <laughs> reindeer. <laughs> and that was my first experience with the game. Nice. And it was a lot of fun. 
And it wasn't until, you know, a month later that I played again and was actually able to see the original game with the original monsters. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the dude that used to be Santa Claus. And oh, yeah, that, that, those guys used to be snowmen. That's how that's what they do. Mm. That was uh, that was probably one of my <laughs> favorite moments, too. What about you, Tom? So am I... I'm going to give you guys a chance to do this first. Any honorable mentions? Because I've got an honorable mention and then my actual pick. Oh, I think Killing Floor was my honorable mention. Okay. Josh? Honorable mention? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think probably Fortnite would be my honorable mention. Um, I'm going to call out Mr. Veggie Man. Uh, the beginning of Final Fantasy Tactics, where you learn how to play by having a snowball, a snowball fight. Yeah, that's excellent. Because it... It not only gives you like the entire, uh, you know, well, not the entire, but most of the the baseline tactics gameplay, which is pretty in depth for Final Fantasy Tactics, but it does so in a way where your characters can't actually be hurt because it's a snowball fight, um, and it really fits with the story and the theme of the game. I really like that. Um, my honorable mention is Fy underscore Ice World from uh, CS one point six from the old school Counter Strike. Um, <laughs> It is uh, a typical Counter-Strike deathmatch map where there's one of every gun laying on the floor on one side and the other side. It's this tiny square with very little cover, uh, and there's one team on each side. And you just have to run and try to find the gun that you're next to and then kill people with that weapon. And because the spawns are randomized, you'll end up with a different gun each time. It's just, it's so much fun. And the only reason it is it is icy or wintry at all is because of the limited texture palette they had in 1.6. Um, but my favorite uh, was, which should probably be the name of a, uh, probably a uh, Kanye West song, Free ZZ Peak. Uh, Free ZZ Peak is the, uh, one of the snow levels from the original Banjo-Kazooie, and everything is so Christmassy. There's a giant snowman, and he's wearing a scarf, and he's got a pipe, and one thing, you've got to keep uh, like little Christmas light bulbs from getting eaten by these guys that would rise up and eat. There are little boxes of presents everywhere, uh -huh. and there's this Christmas music is just so good. <laughs> I am totally throwing this in the chat right now. Um, the Christmas music is just so light and airy and happy, yeah. um, and it's just fucking ridiculous, the whole thing. It's by far my favorite winter level in any game I have ever played. Uh, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> uh, can we, uh, can I do another honorable mention to the Ski Free Yeti for just wrecking my shit over and over again? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I forgot about that, and that, that kind of popped in my head just now. Yeah. Okay. So the second half of this uh, topic, what is your favorite Christmas present you've gotten uh, related to video games? Adam, I'm going to you first. Oh, God. You got to give me a second to think. Oh, related to video games. Honestly, when I got my first... I want to think maybe PS2. When I got my PS2, that was that was a big deal for me. I think I got it. What was my first game on that? Okay, so it was Final Fantasy X or X, whichever. Some people say X, some people say X, apparently. I don't know. Um, I got Final Fantasy as the first one. And then I got some NASCAR game because I was into NASCAR at that age <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why my favorite part of NASCAR Which, 99 is driving backwards. on ex, Bristol. Ex, I was about to say that <laughs> driving backwards <laughs> and causing wrecks. I never played it the way you're supposed to play it. Yeah. And uh, Tony Hawk underground. Uh, so thug, thug life. <laughs> what about you? All right, Josh. Um, shit. So I'm hard, yeah. It's it's a, <laughs> that was a good deflection. Um, it's really hard hard to pick. Some of them are also not. I don't remember if it was a birthday present or a Christmas present. Really tough. But anyway, one of my first presents, my first video game related presents ever, was uh, Twisted Metal Two, and that game was pro I think that was my first Christmas present video game. Twisted Metal was awesome. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that game was amazing. I really did really. I, I played the crap out of that. I would really like them to revamp it, much like they did Road Rash. Maybe er, for uh, Road Rash. I played. I played the the best version of Twisted Metal called Streets of Sim City. Oh, you yeah. can actually what? import your Sim City two save files and and drive on those roads. Oh, wow. that's pretty cool. It's what, pretty was, great. Uh, what was the most recent Twisted Metal game? Wasn't there one for like? PS3 or something? I thought there, there was, was a Twisted PSP Metal Black. One. Was it Twist, Twisted Metal Black? Twisted Metal Black. That's what I was thinking of. There's also a revamped uh, one just called Twisted Metal that came out. Was that? Was that for PS3 or when, what? Uh, yeah, I think era so. Was that okay. PS3? Yeah. Hmm. Just kind of died. Right. Yeah, Tom, it's kind of a loss. What about you, genre? My my favorite Christmas present for a video game has got to be Majora's Mask. Um. I don't know why I got it on Christmas or around Christmas, but I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I spent the entire day playing it. Why it's so memorable is because I fucking hated it. Um, I, I played it. I hated being the little Deku scrub. I hated the time limit. I hated how small the world <laughs> was. I hated everything about that game. And I went back to playing Ocarina of Time until I dug it out several years later and went through it properly. Um, it's one of those games that has cemented in me the idea that <clears throat> um excuse me um you can absolutely hate games as a kid or you can hate games going into them with the wrong mindset mm -hmm. but growing up and approaching it in a more mature way or approaching it with the right mindset can absolutely change the way you feel about a game um yeah. I thought Majora's Mask was too tiny because Ocarina of Time had this big giant sprawling world for the time uh, in Majora's Mask, it was really small and compact, but what I didn't understand as a kid is that every little detail of that town in Majora's Mask took place over 72 hours. So the entire game, it wasn't, you know, X, Y, and Z coordinates big and expansive and explorable, but mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was T, it, it was time explorable, it was temporally huge. Uh, and when I grew up and I learned to appreciate that, it's since become one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. Hmm. Nice. Crazy. That's yeah. cool. On honorable, honorable mention to uh, Metal Gear Solid, the first game. I remember getting that for Christmas one year. I forgot about that when you asked me the first question. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was huge for me. <laughs> and also counts as a winter level. Shadow Moses was not yes. a sunny place. No, it was not. It was very cold. As demonstrated by... Huh? Whose footprints are these? Uh, yeah. Oh my god. That, the fact that they did all of that shit on the PS1 just blows my mind. It was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> um, but, unless you guys had anything else, I think that's it for the show. Oh, it is. Oh. It is. Uh, I'm going to call it some honorable mentions in, in chat. Thanks to uh, AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, of course, we have the North Pole and Twisted Metal 3. Uh, Mario 64 Snow Levels, uh, Rocket League Snow Day, which is by far the only way to play Rocket League. <laughs> yeah, let's talk, about, let's talk about that for 15, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, Rocket so, League Snow Day is... Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was going no, to. I was totally no, going to follow that. I don't want to. Oh, okay. but Mike, please. <laughs> yeah, um, do. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, with that being said, thank you for tuning in to the 72 Pin Connector Podcast. You can find this show and all of our content right here on twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Uh, to find the hub world to all things 72 pin connector, you can go to 72 pin connector.com. Uh, there you will find podcast feeds for our RSS feed. But if you don't like that and you do want the podcast, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, there's another one, Pocket Casts. Uh, there's like a bazillion podcast apps, and we are on almost all, all of them, them or much. all of them. Yeah. Most of them. Um, you can tweet at us uh, at 72 PC Podcast if you don't think we talk about Rocket League quite enough. Um, so we will definitely take that to heart. To catch older episodes of our show and cool gameplay clips, you can go to 72 Pin Connector on YouTube, uh, and there you will find a fantastically edited version of Dark Souls Day 4 by Josh and I, uh, edited <laughs> by our very own White Grizzly. Thank you, Grizzly, for producing <laughs> literally the best video we have ever had on our YouTube. Um, <laughs> and if you really, really feel old school and want to write us a uh, virtual letter, uh, you can send those to fanmail at 72pinconnector.com. Uh, 
with that, I think that's about it. We can bring this call back outs. to a close. Call outs. Oh, yes. Call outs. Labs call outs. Yes. Adam, this some is stuff you. during the cast. This <laughs> is important. Uh, Vospec has resubscribed with Twitch Prime for two months. Thank you. Uh, not Josh has resubscribed Prime for six months. Whoa. Oh, wait, who's that? Wait, I don't know. Damn. No it's idea who that guy is. Oh. No, it's not oh, Josh. Josh. It's not Josh. Yeah, yeah. It's not Josh. It's, it's, no, not. it's not Josh. Somebody he else. Says Either way, six months. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Ace Platinum, thank you for following. Thank you for talking in chat earlier. I'm sorry we didn't get to your questions, but uh, it's sometimes it's hard to get questions in with our weird discussion topics and stuff. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe we could do like a Q and A sometime. That would That'd be, be fun. Cool. Yeah, a segment. That'd be wonderful. Um, but thank you for following so much, uh, Mr. Veggie Man. Twenty three has subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much, Veggie Man. And hey. Zuppel hosted us with for yeah. viewers. So thanks for that, and thanks for everybody that uh, was watching from his stream. And with that, uh, we are going to prepare for our postcast game, uh, which is Freestyle 2. We will get that rolling soon after we close this. We've got to get stuff set up and get ready for our postcast game. Um, hit up our links on the Discord. They should be somewhere lower down here on our Twitch page. Um, jump in our Discord, head to the postcast room. We'll be there shortly, and we can totally kick this thing off right. Shoot some hoops. Thank you all for joining us, and have a good night. Merry Christmas. Bye, everybody. everybody. Game on. See ya.